Hi, I'm Tom Mastriani, and welcome to another episode of Wine and Dine with Mastro, where food and magic meet. I'll be preparing today a blackened swordfish, and I'm going to be pairing it with three great wines. Welcome back. All right, so we're gonna make this blackened swordfish, and I've got three great wines. We're gonna start with a Seaside Cellars Sparkling Brut, okay? And the thing about this wine is it's sparkling, and there's a lot going on with, with the wines that you have to know about, and I'm gonna try and break it down for you. So let's grab the wine. Okay. This is a French wine, okay, and this, it comes from the coastal region of the Mediterranean Sea where you're going to get a lot of climate change. It's very hilly and this should be a very nice wine. Most wines in that region are very, very good. They're some of the best class wines uh, made. So let's open this up. Now we don't need the wine key for this, so we will need a knife though. So let's cut the wrapper here. Sometimes they give you a little pull tab. But in this case, they're not giving us any easy way of opening this. It's much easier if you use a wine key. Or if you can use a wine key. All right. Now, this isn't a Champagne. Even though it's from France, it has to be from the region of Champagne to be called actually Champagne. So this is just called a sparkling wine. So there we go, that sounds good. And you know how it usually bubbles over? If you put a little shake to it, you're gonna lose it and it'll all pour out, so. And you're always gonna get that mousse on top, which is this foamy portion. And the bubble size determines how long it's aged and how much fermentation is in there. Usually the smaller the bubbles, the better the wine. Uh, it's been aged more, it's more complex um, and a little bit sweeter. So this is probably a little dry. Um, uh, the, the name Brut means dry. So let's uh, taste it. Mm. Mm. Immediately I got honey out of there. Mm. Mm. That's really nice. Honey and a fruity, fruity bouquet. No florals, just, um, hmm. It's very light and crisp, clean. The flavor is, um, I've got a little tangerine, a little grapefruit, and a touch of lemon in here. Oh, yeah, check that out. Very light color, very, very pale pink color. Also, this type of meal we have with this fish, it's a very light flavor, even though we're gonna have the blackening on there. Remember, seafood usually calls for a white or a light colored wine, as opposed to going with a big red or something bold and overpowering, so you don't wanna overpower the meal. So this is, uh, this is gonna be a good choice. All right, we're gonna prepare this piece of uh, swordfish now. Now, if you notice, this is the whole side, you know, a large piece. We're gonna cut this in half, and we're gonna cook it up. All right, so now we're gonna take this piece of swordfish, we're gonna cut it in half, and, because this is just too big for the skillet that we're gonna blacken it in. We're gonna put seasonings on it, and then uh, we'll take it from there. So, first of all, let's uh, get the skillet hot. Turn up the stove. We're gonna put it on a medium high heat. Oil in there while it's heating up. And we're gonna put some butter in there also. That should do it. 
Now butter's gonna give it that, you know, that extra flavor to it. The oil just increase the volume and keep it well saturated in the heat, so. All right, so now we're gonna trim the fish. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the skin and we're gonna omit the bloodline, okay? Because that's got a little more gamey flavor to it. I wanna make it a, a more clean flavor to it. So we're gonna stick with the same knife. It's incredibly sharp, so I don't have a problem with it. I mean, some people like the bloodline. It's, it's not terrible, and it depends on how the fish was caught and how it was drained. Um, you tend to have more blood if it's not you know, drained properly when they catch the fish. So, okay. So now we're gonna use our blackening seasoning. And some people like to do just one side. I like to do both sides, so. Just want to keep one hand dry, one hand wet. All right, so that's nicely seasoned. We we'll even get the edges here a little bit. Wonderful! Look at that. That is just perfect. That's the way we want it to look. So now our oils and butter mixture is ready. A little bit of moisture in the uh, oil. All right, so now let's put it in. Always put it in away from you. Whenever you're dealing with oil in a pot, you always wanna put the food in on closest to you first and then fold it in. Just in case it slips, falls, splatters oil on you, it's not a good day then. All right, so we're gonna let this cook and this should take about three minutes or so, and then we'll flip it over. All right, so now we have that swordfish in there cooking. Let's grab the next one. So our next one has a very attractive bottle. This is Gerard Bertrand Co de Roses, okay? And they call it that. Look at this bottle. You're gonna have to zoom in on that, but it's like handing you a, a rose. Do they, uh, very pretty bottom. Uh, just for that reason, this is a, a nice buy. I'd up it by one on the Mastro scale just for that. So, and I know for a fact this is a very difficult bottle to open. So, expect to wait a little bit while you're opening this. It has a really interesting, it doesn't have a cork, it has this glass top that's, oh my goodness, it's never come out that easy before. Wow, and I have had this before. It's a great wine, but uh, that was quick. All right. Hmm. I don't know. Hopefully it's good. All right, so let's give it a pour. And again, very pale, kind of pinkish yellow color. Now this is also a French wine, and it's from the Languedoc region, okay? And again, you have, it's very interesting because French wines, whenever you go look at it, you're gonna be intimidated, as most people are, to try and read the label. And you're looking at this and it says on here, Languedoc, okay? It's just long doc. And that's, or well, long doc, which is uh, the way it's pronounced. And this is a, a combination of three different wines. So Grenache, a Syrah, and a Sinsol, okay? So, just check that out. So, this is a very nice wine. All right, let's give it a swirl. Check the alcohol level. Hmm, very light, not too much. No legs in there. So, I'd say this is probably around 11, 11%. Almost smells like roses. A little bit of rose. All right, I've got a little lemon, a little peach in the nose. Definitely peach. 
and then maybe um, lemon peach and some citrus. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. Watermelon up front, and then I've got a little touch of grapefruit. Yeah. It's a little tight, but very light, very clean, very light. Nice finish, smooth, really clean. Very nice wine, very nice. All right, so now let's uh, flip this over. Again, ooh, look at that, beautiful. Now that blackened, that's exactly the way you want it to look. Also, if we check for the density, let's see it's certainly cooked. Um, go by the, if you go by the feel, you'll see how the, uh, the fish bends in. And this is just right, it's not, you know, it's giving some, a little bit, kind of like if you think of it this way, you know, this is medium, this is rare, and this is, um, or this is well, the, the actual push, medium and rare. So this is just right. And you don't want to undercook your, your swordfish. You want to have it um, cooked through. Gives it that flakiness. If it's not cooked all the way through, you're not going to have the flakiness, which is definitely desirable here. So we'll give this about a minute on this side. All right, so now this is at the perfect temperature. We're going to put it on the plate, and we're going to rest it there. And then we're going to prepare the spinach so that um, that'll go with this. And let's open up the third wine. This wine's really special. Um, it's a new release. It's called, in Italian, it would be Fragili, but here we're gonna call it Fragile. So if anybody saw a Christmas story, Fragili. And <laughs> so uh, this is another French wine. It's a rosé. This is a new release from Orange Swift. I haven't had this yet. Uh, I'm hoping this is going to be spectacular. Uh, a lot of his wines that uh, has come from that vintner has been spectacular. I think my favorite so far is called Machete. So let's open this up. This particular vintner has some very interesting uh, labels, and and the, the wines are very good. So I think on our previous show we had another one of his wines. I think we had Blindfold. Had the guy on the cover, he was like all, you know, tied up in Blindfold. It's really weird, but, um, but it's something memorable, like this, fragile, or fragility. Right. Again, pink, kind of almost a salmon-y color. A little darker than the others. Okay, you'll see these are a little more lighter pink, more swordfish color. And this one's a little bit more salmon color. Now, another thing about these particular wines, they're usually very, very high in alcohol. So right now I'm looking to see the, the legs form. Again, they're not forming, so it's a very, whites won't have the viscosity, okay, the thickness of it as, as a red. Um, but you'll see it has a lot of hang time on the, uh, on the glass itself and the way that it breaks up. So let's give it a, let's check the nose. Mmm, wow. A little earthiness to it right off the bat. Yeah, so a little floral. That's it, it's, it's a very light nose. Not too much uh, really hit me. really well balanced. I've got a little watermelon in there, a little, little grapefruit, not as much as the other. And these are also from the uh, Languedoc region in France. So these are all French wines and uh, all different tastes. But I'd say these two taste a little more similar. This is a little more complex, a little more body to it. Not bad, very, very clean, very smooth, very drinkable. 
you know, by itself or with, with food. And we're gonna try and see how it is with this. Mm. That's okay. All right. I think we have three winners so far. So we're gonna prepare a, a side dish for the swordfish. So we're gonna go with a spinach and we're gonna use the same pot that we cooked the swordfish in because we've got the flavor of the fish, we've got the oil and butter in there, which is what we wanna use for the, um, what we're gonna do is sauteed spinach. So we're gonna get cleaned up here and then we're gonna start on the spinach. So, see you in a minute. And we just cleaned up and now I'm gonna cut up some garlic, throw it in this pot, with the oil and the uh, butter. All right, the big knife. Broke out the big butcher block, the big knife. Let's take this off the heat for a minute. Just break this up. I want some big pieces. Cut the ends first off of the uh, garlic, okay? Then we're gonna give them a little, not too big a smash, but we're gonna smash them down a little bit just to, uh, Free them up. Okay, and then we're going to slice them into uh, some big pieces, big slivers. Because in this kind of a dish, it's nice getting those pieces of uh, garlic. So we're going to slice them this way. Okay, so let's get these in there. We're going to add in the leaves. Except for the ones that escape. And this is all going to wilt down. So now we've got the spinach in here and it's, it's wilting down. A little bit of salt. Just a, maybe a half a teaspoon. And then we're gonna need something to move this around. All right, we're gonna get tongs. Oh yeah, we got all that blackened seasoning. We got the moisture from the, from the garlic. Nice. All right, this is looking beautiful right now. Now we're gonna put this on the bottom. We want all that garlic. And now, Take our rested swordfish, and we're gonna put it, lay it right on top here. Beautiful. There you have the blackened swordfish. Look at that, ooh. Looks good on all angles. All right, look at that beautiful piece of swordfish. Is that not spectacular? All right, I can't wait to try it. And let's bring it over. We're gonna, we, I mean, dress it up, presentation's everything. So we're gonna take a little piece of this. And I, you know, I'm using the big knife. Mmm. Oh, like butter. Sorry, I didn't get to show you that. Look at that. Moist, light, flaky. That's beautiful. Really tender. How's that look? Oh yeah, you just want to jump through the TV. Watch it in front of millions of people. No. All right, so now we're gonna try it with some wine. But before that, let's see how the spinach is. Oh, what a nice contrast. It's blending in really nice. There's a little saltiness in there. The oil's blackened as it's been like sauteed with the spinach. 
Beautiful. Gotta love that. That's really, 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 really good. So now, let's try it with our first one. This was the uh, sparkling Seaside Cellars. Okay. The Rosé Brut. That's really nice. You don't have to worry about a sparkling opening up where it's going to change flavor after a certain amount of time, like some big reds, you have to leave them out for 20 minutes, half hour, an hour, you know, before they fully open up, before their eyes open up and, and all the air gets in there and it starts to release or balance out its flavors. So let's try this. That's really, really, really good. That's excellent. There's a, um, a contrast between the spinach and the fish. The fish is here, the spinach is here, the wine is right here. So there's a real nice, complete balance between the three. That's great. Mm. That definitely goes. All right, next one from Long Duck is the Coat of Roses. Okay, so we're gonna try this one next. Let's try this first. Just to cleanse my palate of the other one. Now you see the way this just flakes apart? It's great. So tender that fish. It's great. Again, great pairing. The finish after, a couple seconds after, I'm getting a little hint of lemon, which which is nice, because it, it's coming in. We, we didn't let, add any lemon, this is just garnish. So if I wanted to, we could squeeze it on there, but we want to taste the fish as is. But uh, yeah, that's leaving a nice residual feeling of, of a lemoniness uh, coming down the back. All right, now let's try fragile or fragile. Because I am Italian, and I have to say things in Italian. And I remember, long dock. A little more of a contrast. I'm getting more fruit. A lot of fruit pulling out of this. I think the blackened seasonings are pulling the fruit out. The finish is a little shorter, not as not as long and lemony as this. But this is nice too. Very good. I'm gonna to have to go back. So let's, uh, let's just try this. See if we can pick a winner. I might have to finish this whole steak before I get to the finish. Very nice. Clean, crisp, not overpowering. Go here again. I love the initial flavor with this. It's really, really nice. Off the top, and the finish is great. The lemoniness, it's a mild bit overpowering, just slightly, slightly overpowering, but not bad, not bad at all. Now we'll go back. Not too much nose here. So here it is. I'm gonna go with the Seaside Cellars, number one. I'll give that a, a four on the Mastro scale. And then it's gonna be a kind of a tie between these two. If you want the lemony finish, this is the way to go, but I think I like it. I think I like that lemony finish, that, that contrast. This is good drinking anytime, but for this meal, I'd say, this is number one, Seaside Cellar. Then we've got Coat of Roses. And then, still awesome, we've got the Fragile. And 
this is a nice finish afterwards. So there you have it, three great wines. And I'd say this one's the number one pick. And this is the star of the show. So thanks for joining me. I'm Tom Mastriani on Wine and Diamond Mastro, where food and magic meets. See you next time. And you can join me on my website, www.mastrotv.com. Follow me on my Instagram account. I'll post all sorts of great photos of food and some recipes. And just follow me around. It's a lot of fun. Cheers.